Hey folks, it's time to talk about video performance and if there's any overheating issues with the Nikon Z8. Now, I have to say from the outset, look at the size of this thing. It has a full magnesium alloy body and it's designed to dissipate heat. This guy is that much smaller and it only has a magnesium top plate. The rest of it is carbon fiber. Now, I don't know how that I, you know, exactly affects the heat dissipation but I can tell you from the outset, it clearly does because this doesn't do nearly as well. I should just say this is actually my third time running these tests. The first day testing them, I did a couple of tests, but then didn't have a camera beside it. And I think people want to see it versus the Z9. I went back in and had a day where I was doing a bunch of different video tests. And then I got access to this one, which is a final production. So I thought, why should I even release the figures that I got pre-production? That's not helpful to anyone. So I've done all of the tests again. Now, at the beginning, they were saying that this had exactly the same video capabilities. That's actually not true. The official word now that I got is, whereas this camera will basically do two hours and five minutes in all the different formats, except for NRAW and ProRes uncompressed because you would just fill up every hard drive in your city. It's, they're saying that the only two video ty types have been confirmed estimated uh, recording time and it's only when you're using high temperature mode on the camera so it's 4k 60p in 8-bit with extended oversampling off and there they're saying you should get uh, 125 minutes so two hours and five minutes and then 8k 30 also only in 8-bit and there you should be looking at getting about 90 minutes now before I show you all the results that I've gotten Quick plug, I have made an expert setup for Nikon that takes you through every mirrorless camera in the range from the Z50, the ZFC, all the way up to the Z8 and Z9. It takes you through all the physical controls on every camera, how to initially set them up out of the box to get great results, and then every single menu item, including all of the latest menu items in the Z8, showing you what they do and how to customize the camera for your best results. Link to that one is below, please do check it out. Now, I have to say that whilst the results aren't exactly close, honestly, I doubt that it's going to be an issue for 90 or more percent of people who are potential buyers for this camera. But those who are heavy into the highest bitrate video will care about it. So here's my findings. First of all, in ProRes 60p, at 10 minutes and 30 seconds, the Z8 got a hot card, 10 minutes 40, hot camera. 19 minutes 45, it got high heat camera warning. And at 30 minutes and about 26 seconds, it actually completely shut down. Now to its credit, it gave us a clear 30 second countdown and shut itself down safely and we didn't lose any of the data. Whereas the Z9 had no hot card and no camera warning that's gonna be a fairly typical story. Except for this next example, NRAW 8.3K 60P, the heaviest of heavy files using 640 and 650 gig cards. I should point out we're using only Nikon's approved cards, the 640 Wise Advanced Pro and the 650 Cobalt. And I kept swapping them between cameras to make sure it wasn't a card issue on either one. In that case, after seven minutes, we got a hot card warning. After 7.15, hot camera. After 15 minutes, they were both completely full. So I quickly formatted those gigantic cards. Can you believe that? 15 minutes on 650 gig. And then we re-recorded. After two minutes, it got to high heat on the Z8. After five minutes, the Z9 also got a hot card warning. And after 11 minutes and 30 seconds, the Z8 completely shut down. So that's 26 and a half minutes of NRAW with that slight pause for reformatting. Now, speaking of hot video, God, that's a terrible segue. Check out my getting back into it. Uh, this is one that I, these are the ones that I use a fair bit. So 10 bit, 265, 8K, 30p extended oversampling on. We use this all the time. After six minutes, the Z8 got a hot card, 12 and a half minutes hot camera, 40 minutes, 
So it took a long time before it got to high heat. And then at 59 minutes, it shut down. So just under an hour. And uh, to be honest, for most people, 59 minutes of 8K 10-bit is more than they're ever going to want to do, right? But we often do longer takes. So the Z9, for your reference, did the full two hours and five minutes. Then I restarted the recording again, and it got another 37 minutes, still without getting a hot card warning. That's just, you know, where we stopped it. Next up, another one that we use a lot, 10-bit H.265 4K 120, with, again, with oversampling on. Now, we got quickly a fast card and hot camera warning on the Z8. At 12 minutes, it went to high heat, and at 35 minutes, it shut down. Um, I'm thinking, looking at the numbers there, it could be that it just hadn't fully cooled down from the 8K test before, but we did leave them for, I don't know, normally at least 20 minutes to cool down, and all of this was done in a cool room, so that's what it was. Um, the Z9, again, no problem. We were able to just film and film and film and not get even... Uh, a hot card warning. Back to a heavier one, ProRes RAW 4.1K 60p. After one minute, we got a hot card warning. After five and a half minutes, hot camera, and then it ran out of space. So there you go. Now the two that they specifically mentioned, remember the 4K 60 should get a full two hours and five minutes and the 8K 30 should get about 90 minutes. So I have to say it did pretty well. Uh, on the 8-bit 4K 60, an hour 39 before it got hot, and at an hour 45, the battery died. On a single ENEO 15C battery, I think that's pretty great. No, it's not the two hours and five minutes that they promote. Um, I don't know what conditions they could be expecting that to be in, because this was already with autofocus off, so the camera was working less, but an hour 45. For the 8-bit H.265 in 8K30, in that case, after 17 minutes, we got a hot card. After 28 minutes, hot camera. And then after an hour and 16 minutes, it finally ran out of battery and completely died. So you'll note on a repetitive story there, right? In every case, after some amount of time, the Z8 either overheated and shut down, or the battery ran out, whereas for the Z9, that just never happened. We once got a heat warning, and that was only on the NRAW after whatever it was, 25 minutes. So like I say, this is not to hate on Nikon. I actually think those numbers are pretty incredible for a weather-sealed small camera like this. But there is a significant but to all of this that anyone who's into the heavier video formats needs to recognize. I was filming all of this indoors, in the cool. It's been raining here in Hong Kong. It's cool. And we still had these overheating issues. And you saw how well the Z9 did. When we're shooting out in a hot day, in the sun, even the Z9 will start to get hot card warnings or hot card camera, sorry, hot camera warnings. Uh, but I don't think ever has it fully shut down. If this were out in the sun on a hot day, you can expect the times that I've presented to be much, much lower because it really does make a big difference if the body's in the sun and if it's in, you know, 35 degrees Celsius rather than the 20, 22 degrees Celsius that we were filming in. Again, like I say, for most people who are going to take little clips, like not many people are gonna be doing an hour of 4K 120. That tends to be, you know, slow motion for B-roll, that kind of thing. Even we aren't gonna take an hour long. It's just that the Z9 allows you to. But for me, to be limited to getting, you know, uh, over an hour, you need to be only using 8-bit when this camera is capable of 10 and 12-bit video. It's pretty disappointing at, from, just for me personally. We use 8K heavily, and I can say straight up, I will not be buying a, Z9, a Z8 for video. We actually do need a third 8K capable or slow-mo camera for some of our productions. And it looks like I'll be back to looking at the Z9 for that. For everyone else who's doing just stills or doing actually quite a lot of video, doing 4K, 30, 
10-bit or all of lots of different formats, then I think it's going to be fine. But do be aware, small body, you have heat to dissipate and this kind of a weather sealed body, it's going to struggle, especially when it's put up side by side with something that's much bigger with a full mag alloy body that helps to distribute and dissipate the heat. Let me know what else you would like to see tested. I hope this was useful. Check out all the links below. I'll see you guys soon.